Originally, when I first came to that room, I thought you had to, like, bounce between the enemies, because I didn't realize, like, how many bubbles there were going to be in that room. So you had to, like, bounce with your downward stab between all the enemies in order to get through, but that's thankfully not the case. They don't expect you to be that precise with it. Which is good, because... Yeah. Alright, so we're coming up on an area where we're going to need to use Fairy again. And if you don't have enough magic for Fairy, you can actually grind off that spider guy that I just killed. Uh, I'm actually going to let this get out of the way first. Because if you go back, like, right towards this elevator and then return, he'll respawn. And every five or six kills, he'll drop a blue magic potion. So that's your way of, uh, grinding for magic. That's the way I normally like to do it anyways. Oh, shoot, I forgot about the mini-boss. Crap, I think this is the only other one, though. Alright. Something I don't think I've ever brought up with this guy is actually, you actually want to kill him when he's really close to the edge of the screen. Like, right there. Well, not, like, I mean, get him off his horse when he's right close to the edge of the screen. Because if his horse is still on the screen, you can't see, like, there's going to be too many sprites on the screen, so you can't see where he's going to shoot, and you just have to kind of guess. So you really want that horse off the screen as fast as possible. I'm not sure if I ever brought that up before. I'm pretty sure that someone else brought that up in a video, and I just, like, remembered it. Or in a comment, I mean. I don't know. Alright, advance, advance. Crap, I was going to jump over that one. What? No, I- What? I died? I didn't real I didn't even realize I was low on life. Well, damn it. I better not die one more time here or else I'm in deep trouble. I'm actually gonna cast shield, because I that was so bare. I can't believe I died to what's his face. To a mini boss of all things. Mm, I don't wanna get a second game over in this playthrough, that would just be so embarrassing. That did I even leave that first game over in the first recording? I think I did. Oh well. I had actually quite a few failed recordings of this palaces. They failed for numerous reasons that I don't really want to go into detail with. But, uh... They were all actually, like, really good or... Re either really good or really tense runs of this palace. And what I mean by tense is, like, I was always on the verge of death or something. And then I managed to pull through in the end. But this one's just kind of, kind of been a mediocre run. The novice run. Alright, there we go. And he's going to drop a key that I really don't need, but I'll pick it up anyways, because it's all because it's there. I'm pretty sure the screen won't actually scroll until you pick it up. Oh man, do I have to fight? No, I don't have to fight another one. It looks like there was a second arena there for a second to fight a second one. Alright, uh, do I want to go for that? Hmm. See, I'm debating here, because, uh... If you go all the way to the right there, like, you won't actually fall down this pit to progress. But if you go all the way to the right, there's actually a one-up doll there. But it's guarded by this most obnoxious placement of enemies. There's like two bubbles in close quarters that move really fast and a blue iron knuckle. So it, it's really hard. And if you let those bubbles hit you too much, you're not going to have enough magic to cast fairy spell, which you'll need to do here. So I think I'm actually going to pass on that one-up. Go get it if you really feel that you need to. But anyways, uh, so cast the fairy spell really quick here. Otherwise, you're just going to keep falling and you have to loop back around up to there. You actually loop back up to that room where like the spider was that you could grind for magic off of. You'll find yourself back in that room eventually. So there's that. Yeah, you might have, you might remember seeing an elevator in that room. You actually come up that elevator if you fall down there. And if you go down that elevator, then you can like find some pee bags or something. Like I don't know. All right, here we go. Here's the boss. So for this boss, first, okay, your bu your buffs are gonna be the shield and jump spells. But don't cast jump while you're still here. You want to actually jump into the arena before you cast it, because otherwise you'll bump your head and fall in the lava. Trust me, I've practiced with that plenty of times myself. You actually don't even really need jump for this boss, but it's very helpful. All right, and here he is. This asshole is going to be a major pain. I actually haven't fought him in a while, so I don't remember exactly his pattern, if he has one. But basically, you really want to try and stay away from the edges if you can. Stop appearing over there where I can't hit you. And you just kind of want to duck and just, like, stick to one pit and kind of duck and swing over it. That's what I normally found. I actually, I seem to remember taking this guy out a different way before. I'm pretty sure I should be hopping over there when he actually appears up there. Is he going to appear over there again? Yeah, he is. And I, oh, shoot. That was really close. All right, appear, nope, of course you appear over there now. Yeah. Crap, I'm just... I'm just out of it. I'm so sorry, guys. Alright. Yeah. 
So you can actually jump up and hit. You actually have to be a lot closer to him than you might think in order to hit him. Because his nose isn't really part of his hitbox, as weird as that is. Like, the part of the box that'll hit you, I mean. You really gotta hit him in, like, the center of the head, which is the weirdest thing. So you gotta be really close to the edge, like this. Yeah, and then you can hit him like that. Jump over this, and... Nice. See, that's a, that's a nice round of attacks there. And then you jump over it. You're really gonna time your jumps very precisely to jump over that, though. I'm surprised he hasn't appeared in the middle. That's what he normally does for me. It's actually a lot easier if he appears in the middle, from my recollection of things. Sweet! I was a little bit scared there, I'm not gonna lie. Because I was just a little bit on edge from having one life. I don't think he actually even got one hit off on me, though. No, he, he did, I'm pretty sure. Never mind. By the way, nothing more... There's nothing more aggravating in the world than killing that guy and then falling to the pit afterwards and getting a game over. Nothing in the world will piss you off more except maybe than die... Except maybe, like, dying to the core X of Yachuza in a zero... in a 1% run of Metroid Fusion or something. But that's that, so that is the sixth pass. What am I up to? 32 minutes? Are you freaking kidding? 33 minutes? Holy crap. Didn't expect it to be quite that long, but... Whatever. Um... Okay, what am I doing? I'm trying to, like, avoid these guys. I don't know why. Alright, so you want to cross this bridge, actually, to go to... Because we actually need to go to this hidden town now in order to get through. And... What? Okay. That's the... I was about to say, it's really easy to die in this area, so be careful. Um... Yeah. Well, that sucks. Alright guys, as I'm working my way back here, I figured I could show this off. If you go into these fence areas, like I was talking about before, uh, cast the spell. Spell, it's only 16 magic, and it'll turn all these guys into bots. So, all the guys on screen, anyways. You probably want to cast it in a more, uh, full-up area than I did. But, anyways, there's the gist of that. It basically turns any enemy into a bot, so if you really don't want to fight it. I actually probably could utilize that in the 6th palace, now that I think about it, but... Oh well. Okay, guys, I'm back at this bridge here, and hopefully we can actually get across here uh, without without resorting to death again. Jeez, that was so freaking embarrassing. I'm sorry about that, guys. Yeah, but generally, you really do have to watch out on this the, on this bridge. You do, you can kill this dog here if you really want the experience. I don't think it's I personally don't think it's worth the risk, but eh, whatever floats your boat, I guess. I generally like to use the jump spell there. Alright, so this town, you won't actually be able to see these little purple eyes unless you have the cross. So don't come here unless you have that, or I guess you can, and just risk it and just take the damage. I'm not sure what happens if you do, actually. You might not be able to get the spell if you do. I can't remember quite. If you know, then post in the comments below, but this is our most powerful magic spell and also our last one. Man, we're so close to the end here. Uh, yeah, so there's the Thunder Spell, and even with level 8 magic, it still, it still takes 64 magic to cast. It's incre- it basically kills everything on screen, and it's required for a certain boss later on. So it's- you really gotta be- what am I gonna say? You, you really got- you really- even though it's tempting to use sometimes, you gotta be a little bit conservative with it, so just be wary with that. But that is our last magic spell. God, this Let's Play has taken so much longer than I ever anticipated. I started it way back in September. It's such a short game, too. Oh, well, it's been fun. It's been quite the quest, if I do say so myself. <laughs> but it's not quite the end yet. There's still a huge gauntlet to go through. Like, you guys won't even believe this is going to be insane. Alright, now, I guess I can show you... Oh, look, a fairy. Uh, I guess I can show you that this bridge here, it's the same as the bridge that led to the town. Uh, it's the one that you can omit if you actually just walk around, like I did before. And I would recommend doing that most of the time, especially because I just generally don't like to take the risk of dying here, but... <laughs> this recording's long enough as is, I don't want to take that big detour again. Anyways, um... So here, down there in that red, like, blotchy area down there, that's our, that's our final destination, or the start of our final destination. This graveyard here, you really don't want to run into any enemies in it. So what I recommend doing is stepping in, stepping out right away. So that you get, like, this blank area. And then you want to head down there as fast as you can in order to get there. 
Sweet, and we got one of these areas. Wait, what? I don't remember this blue guy being in here. Oh well. Whatever. You're gonna be facing these blue guys a lot in the next little bit, by the way. So be prepared. Yeah, so you can cast the spell spell here, or the thunder spell if you just want to kill them immediately. Of course, the spell spell, basically you can kill them immediately anyways. Alright, so head over here if you want. There's a red magic jar, which I'm actually going to utilize. By the way, up there when you were at that like little safe yellow path before the graveyard, if you want to, there's like a little bit of a trick to getting health there. Just step on the path like I did, or step on the hostile spots like I did, and then step back off onto the safe path. And if you're lucky, a fairy will appear. Actually, it appears more frequently than you might expect. And, oh crap, here's our first... These encounters are going to be really gnarly, just FYI. Got a lot of these eyeball dudes. You gotta be really careful, because there's pits everywhere in them. So just be... These guys steal your experience, too, and they don't even offer that much experience themselves. So it's not... Really, it's really stupid. What? Dude, why am I taking so much damage? Holy crap, didn't I just heal up? What is wrong with me? I was just at full, and now look how dead I am. Yeah, that's how... If you don't keep your wits about you, that's how quick you can end up dead. I was trying to talk about something. Yeah, but that fairy strategy, you can utilize that. I actually utilized that off-screen when I was working my way back to that first bridge to regain some of my health. It took a while, but uh, that's just the things you gotta expect when you utilize that kind of luck-based strategy. And get rid of this guy if I can. Thank you. Alright, uh, these gaps, you really want to have the jump spell on. You can cross them, I think, if you don't have the jump spell, but I really wouldn't risk it in this area. Alright, and these guys, these guys get to be a bit of a pain, because they're all in these, uh, low roof areas. And it, they're really tough to hit, so you kind of want to lure them out of those areas if you can, before you actually kill them. I'm pretty sure you still can kill them if they're in those low roof areas, it's just a lot more of a pain, and you can't use the jumping strategy quite as well. By the way, a little bit of a trick you can utilize in this area, because there's going to be a lot of these, like, predetermined squares like this, where you just, uh, go onto the square and go and get thrust in these little cave-type areas. If you want, you can utilize the strategy of, like, running into an enemy as you, uh, oh, crap, not that guy. That's one of the blue guys I was talking about before, the blue variations of those alligators. So you're going to have to be really wary with those, because you're going to see quite a few of them around here, too. Jeez. Oh, crap. Okay, uh, I'm gonna cast life. Gotta be safe. We really want to cast... If you're not too comfortable around here, you should probably cast shield on most of these encounters, too. But, like I said before, you kind of want to be conservative with your magic around here, so... Yeah, this guy's in my way. You can see he throws his thing, so... Try to... you Try to avoid fighting as many of those guys as you can. Alright, so like I said, uh... If you want, you can wait for, like, an enemy to appear and walk onto the square at the same time as that enemy to bypass the square. At least I'm pretty sure that works here. I'm going to try it a few more times just to see if I can show it off. Alright, yeah, so I did that. And it's not that these encounters here are much less treacherous than the actual predetermined squares themselves. In fact, if anything, you probably want to take those squares because they're pretty much the same amount of difficulty and you get more experience from them. So it's really up to you which one you take, which path you want to take out. Plus, if you get into a hard encounter, then you risk uh, fight fighting those uh, blue guys. So just be wary of the risks. Regardless of what you do, it's going to be tough to get through here, so just be forewarned about that. 